your first major exhibition, 1967, at Waters Gallery. Um, it garnered an enormous amount of attention from your artist peers as well as the media. How did the process of working on that show and making the works in that show impact your next kind of move as an artist, sort of thinking about the next decade, the 1970s, and the kinds of community art and artsmobile work you were making then? The few years after I left art school, I, at a certain point I isolated myself pretty much off from general social activities and focused in on just work I was making in the studio. And I, um, uh, at that time, I was very close to Mike Brown and we, he was had similar sorts of aims. And so I only really talked to people who were you know, had this intensity of purpose. And I spent a number of years uh, in that way until there came a point at which I actually had had this, had a breakthrough mm. where work actually, instead of being, uh, having to maybe strive, flowed out of me and where there was sort of this sense of breakthrough and realisation and at that point, and that was around these ex these paintings that I exhibited in at Waters, um, I learnt what it was for me to be an artist. Mm. I got it right here. Mm. And um, so I was ready. The exhibition was like a bomb in Sydney. It took off like you wouldn't believe. A lot of the, the blokes who were critics and so on got their knickers in a knot and it's very fascinating to read those crits now. You know, this young woman, I think I was, what, 20, 26 or 7, um, and painting these pictures which had, many of which had strong erotic or symbolic uh, and they were striking, loud paintings, some of, the, some of them, and... Um, but for me, it was, you know, it was a liberation. It had done its job. So um, I wanted, it was such a hard journey to get there that I wanted a break from that intensity. Uh, and so I wanted to do something that was easier. Mm. But I was really curious about the nature of art, not just what you learnt in art books, not just what tradition told you, not just what it teaches it told you. I was really interested about sort of what art was as a human activity. And there were times when I came across works by, you know, amateurs or even people in my own family. And I thought, you yeah, know, this is pretty good. Mm. This is better than in lots of ways than a lot of stuff of you know, fellow students and so on. And I, that was, for me, art was this broad capacity of human activity and the art in museums and so on. It's just one small part of that. When I moved away from painting in the way I had been, I was not interested in acting. Like other people might say, you should act if you're an artist, if you're a proper artist. I wasn't interested in that, you know, and I had to go where it felt significant for me, you know, not because, you know, Van Gogh or whoever spent nine to seven in the studio and worked every day and didn't eat for a week or whatever. I wasn't interested in those mythologies or the, the old stories. And it, that brings us to a point that is very important for me to try and get people to understand that the central tenet of my practice is not a material or a style. It's process and relationship. Relationship, how things fit together. How things fit together in a particular extraordinary way that produces the particularity of an object or a form or, you know, it's understanding more about this mysterious thing 
of making marks on a surface or making, you know, some kind of object that can carry such, such a weight of knowledge and information and inspiration for us. You know, it's, you know, when you come down to it, it's absolutely astounding mm. <laughs> you know, what happens.